Welcome to this video lecture series on antenna and wave propagation. In this video, we will discuss the third fundamental parameter of the antenna which is beam area. Beam area is defined in terms of solid angle. So, what is beam area? When I pass current to a transmitting antenna, it starts radiating. We know that most of the transmitting antennas are directional in nature. That is, they are radiating more in one particular direction and less in other directions. So, to measure the angle over which this transmitting antenna is radiating, I need to have some quantity. So, this quantity for antennas is termed as beam area. So, I measure this beam area in terms of solid angle. So, I need to know what is this term solid angle. So, to find out this term solid angle, I will first explain what is plane angle. So, plane angle, we all know that plane angle is represented by a term called radian. So, radian is the plane angle with its vertex at the center of a circle of radius r that is subtended by an arc of length r. So, what does it mean? If I have a circle of radius r, now if I draw an arc of length r, so this radius is r and the length of arc is also r. So, this arc of length r is making some angle at the center of this circle. Now, this angle is called radian. So, I can represent the circumference of this circle as 2 pi r. We all know that the circumference is 2 pi r. Now, I can represent it like 2 pi into r. I can say that the circumference is 2 pi number of sections of length r. So, if I consider each section of length r, then I can say in the circumference there are 2 pi sections of length r. So, the full circle contains 2 pi radian because each r contains one radian. So, the section r, the section of length r contains one radian at the center. So, 2 pi sections of r would contain 2 pi radians at the center. So, we know that full circle subtends 2 pi radian at the center. Now, we will come to solid angle. Solid angle is described in the terms of T radian or STR. So, solid angle with its vertex at the center of the sphere of radius R that is subtended by a spherical surface of area r square is st radian. Now, we see that this definition and this definition are almost similar, but there is this difference that this is for a circle which is a 2D structure and this is for a sphere which is a 3D structure. Now, if I have this sphere which is a 3D structure, now if I cut a spherical surface of area r square, now this spherical surface of area r square is subtending some angle at the center of the sphere. This angle is called 1 t radian. So, we can say that an area of r square is subtending a solid angle at the center of a sphere that is called 1 t radian. Now, we can realize this area r square as a square with both of its sides as r. Now, when I have a square with both of its sides equal to r, its area would be r into r. 
that is r square so this spherical surface would be equivalent to a square of side r now area of sphere is given by 4 pi r square now i know that the area r square subtends one t radian at the center now the total area can be represented as 4 pi sections of r square area similar is the case with radian now when i have 4 pi sections of r square area and r square represents one t radian so i have 4 pi t radian in the full sphere i hope you can relate it with the radian so to have the relation between the radian and the t radian i will consider this cut out portion from this spherical surface now i consider both sides of the arcs to be of length r which is cutted from this spherical surface now i know that the length r for this 2d plot is representing one radian at the center now again in this in this section the length r is representing one radian so when i multiply this r with this r i will get t radian because t radian is the angle subtended by r square and i have considered this area to be like square cutted out from this structure so r into r is one t radian now r represents one radian and this r also represents one radian for this plane and this plane so one t radian is equal to one radian into one radian that is r into r so one radian square so now we know that one radian is equal to 180 upon pi degree now one radian square would be 180 upon pi square degree square which is 3282.8064 square degree now i know that the full sphere contains 4 pi t radian so 4 pi into 3282.8064 square degree which is equal to 41252 0.96 square degree now this symbol also represents the square degree now we know the radian the t radian the plane angle and the solid angle now we'll see the incremental area and the solid angle so if i consider this sphere which is plotted in x y z coordinates and I have cut a square piece from this spherical surface according to the spherical coordinate system the horizontal component that is the component in the y direction is given by r d theta now the vertical component that is the component in the z direction is given by r sin theta d phi so the total incremental area is given by the multiplication of horizontal component and vertical component so when r d theta is multiplied by r sin theta d phi i will get the incremental area so the incremental area is equal to r square sin theta d theta d phi meter square so i know that r square area subtends one t radian at the center so to find out the total beam area subtended by this incremental area i would divide this incremental area by r square so the total solid angle is given by ds upon r square now if i divide r square sin theta d theta d phi by r square i get the beam solid angle equal to sin theta d theta d phi i know that the beam area is the solid angle through which all of the power of the transmitting antenna would stream so it is the solid angle through which 
all of the power radiated by the antenna would stream. So, the total beam area is given by the double integration of power in theta and phi direction and sin theta d theta d phi represents the spherical coordinates. Now, we took the integration limit of phi from 0 to 2 pi and theta from 0 to pi because we need the phi to be 0 to 360 degree and theta to be 0 to 180 degree to complete a spherical structure. So, when the spherical structure is completed, I get my total beam area. Now, this sin theta d theta d phi represents my solid angle. So, if I need to find out the total beam area, I will represent it in terms of solid angle. So, I represent sin theta d theta d phi with, with solid angle. So, now the total solid angle is given by 4 pi. I saw that the total solid angle of the full sphere is 4 pi. So, I replaced these limits by 4 pi. Now, I have another formula of finding beam area from half powers. So, when I need to find out the beam area with respect to half powers, I have the formula that beam area is equal to 2 theta half power multiplied by phi half power. So, theta half power represents the half power in the E plane and phi half power represents the half power in the H plane. So, the half power in the electric field pattern and the half power in the magnetic field pattern when multiplied it, give, it gives me beam area in terms of T radian. So, we will stop at this point for this video. In the next video, we will discuss the other fundamental parameters of the antenna. Like this video, subscribe my channel and stay connected to watch further videos for more information. Thank you.